All right, so this last week I took the time to do the Paladin Epic 1.5 prequest, Paladin Epic 1.5, and then the Paladin 2.0. Uh, this is the 1.5 prequest, which starts in Plain of Valor. I'm gonna run back through this keep castle area, cross the bridge, and the guy that you're looking for is on the other side. Uh, this is where the quest starts and ends. It is uh, Baltrin Wurders is his name. And basically you're going to say to him that you're willing to help him rebuild Couragebringer. He's going to give you Baltrin Solvent. And then for the next part we are going to go to South Rolf to see Kefal. I used the Eldon camp to get there. But however you get the south row, it's completely up to you. Um, the steps in this guide are based on the steps from the Paladin guide at Eco Progression. Uh, you've probably been to that site, it's a pretty good site. Just wanted to give a video walkthrough of the actual guide there, so this one turned out to be spot on. So after we give Gilfell that solvent, he's going to hand us back a scabbard, which is a six slot container. And then what we're going to do now is collect broken sword pieces to combine in that container. You're going to get three of them from boss fights, which you're seeing now is the three boss fights. And then you're going to get another one from collecting ground spawns. You're going to collect four runes after this. So the first boss fight is in Plain of Storms. You're going to fight Nefekin, Lord of the Kelek Vor, however you say that. He will be untargetable, and he will not become targetable until you kill all the giants in the fort, and then there are six giants north of the fort that you have to kill. Now this is a sped up video because I didn't think you'd want to sit here. It took me like... I don't know, 45 minutes to clear it out. I'm using two groups. Uh, the average gear of these two groups is probably around like raid gear from Gates of Discord. Uh, the tanks and healers might have some, on average, maybe like Omens of War. Uh, this was done in the Depths of Dark Hollow expansion. By no means uh, are these characters best in slot. Uh, have access to play 12 accounts or two groups. For the Epic 1.5 prequest, you really don't need more. And one group, if that, um, this boss fight was pretty straightforward. Uh, you whack away on him, and these treants add spawn as you're fighting him, but they're they're light blue to level 70, and with all the AA and gear, they really really don't do shit. And because you're a paladin, you AOE, AOE heal your group. Um, you're gonna keep aggroing all of them. But I do have an enchanter that I, that mez. But I mean, simple stuff. And like I said, there's these six giants to the north here, up by the rocks. Make sure you get all six of them. And once you kill off all these giants, the actual boss inside of the fort will become targetable. And this boss is e it's easily one group. Well, I would not be surprised if you could literally do it with a healer tank. And even, I guess, if you brought an enchanter at a third class for some DPS. The ads really didn't do that much damage. You could even kill them off as, as they come up and really control the fight. So here we'll run into this building here. I slowed the video back down so you'll be able to see the boss fight. I think even when I started the fight, I might have tried to kill them off at first because sometimes you have to do that, but then I just realized that they weren't really doing much.
But you can see how if the fight takes a long time, you can end up with a lot of those adds. So if you have less damage than I have here, and you really can't control the fight, and can't control all the damage from the adds, then what you're going to want to do is probably fight them off. So according to the EQ progression information, this boss has 350,000 hit points. He rampages and he hits for 1300 plus. Now obviously he's probably not hitting me for 1300 plus and with the armor and all the other stuff that I have gear wise. It also says he has a single target 1500 mana drain. You can see the Paladin's out of mana right now, so if you're relying on him for much many things once the fight gets going, probably not a good idea. Okay, down he goes, so then what I'm looking to do is find him in the advanced loot window. And then find the broken sword piece and loot it. Put it on the paladin. Okay, now this Although it's this early in the video, this was the last thing I did because this guy was not up. It's in Plane of Torment. It does not spawn in DZs from what I've seen. I don't know if it's random chance when you pop a DZ, but he didn't spawn in the one that I had. I have to camp him on the live zone, so it can as Painbringer, and if you have, I think, I don't know if you need all the, the Broken Sword pieces, but I did by this point, because like I said, it was actually the last one I did. Um, they'll give you an emote when you enter the zone, saying somewhere off to the south, and what he is is in the back of the very south tower, so he was extremely easy. I'm pretty sure I could have sold him with the Paladin. Uh, the only thing that you may want to bring people for, maybe a healer, if anybody at all, is, is clearing some of this trash, but if you take the right route, um, and not go, don't go through the other like keep areas or castle areas and kind of stay on the paths. There's actually a path to get down to them that is, doesn't have very many mobs. So you could check out the map on Eco Progression or, or pull up actual, uh, the map in game here and avoid most of that. But he was extremely easy. You'll see him drop fast. And, I mean, the Paladin could have sold him easy. I don't even know if you hurt anybody, but getting him to spawn was the hard part. So I actually had to sit and kind of camp him, which is kind of a pain in the ass when you want to play and do other things, but I refused to let him spawn and go to somebody else, and so I pretty much sat there and waited. But he'll also drop a broken sword piece. And then you'll be at two of the four. So this fight you might be familiar with, it is in Plane of Hate. The Maestro, Maestro of Rancor, or Rancor, however you say half the stuff, easily one groupable. Um, I went to South Row to spawn my own instance, make my own DZ. You can port it from there, or you can have a wizard port you to the actual live one. Uh, path then was pretty simple. He's in that little uh, temple thing toward the back. Pretty easy to see on the map, be marked on the map for sure. One thing is that there's two adds that maybe spawn during the fight. I don't know if it was around like 75% HP or if it was earlier, but there's two hands that spawn on the piano, and if you do not kill them, um, he regens pretty quickly. So you can even see with these two groups of like Gates of Discord raid geared characters that he's respawning. Uh, you can see it's not, it's not, it's not like he's out beating my damage, but you can see it tick up every now and then. So I left those hands up just to show you like 
what it looks like if two groups are beating on him with the hands up. So if you take one group and you're similar geared, um, he might regen them and it might be a really long fight. So I would definitely take out those two hands that spawn on the piano. Um, otherwise, it says hits for 800, has about 420 kHp. So it could be a really long fight if he's regening and you don't have much damage. So you can see him there at the piano. Pretty simple fight. And there's some ads that spawned, it looked like, but they never came in. And you can see after it went past 75%, those hands spawned there on the piano behind me right now. So if you watch closely, you can see his life will tick up sometimes. So they're there, right there. You're going to want to kill those as soon as they spawn. Or it's going to be a little bit longer of a fight. So up to you. But see his health ticking back up as it's bringing him down. You're going to have that bullshit going on when you're dealing with a 420k HP mob and... I have 12 characters here, but if you only had 6, you could see how that might be kind of a problem. And then some of the ads actually did actually come in and aggro me, so I don't know if you can avoid them the whole fight, but for a while they're just kind of walking out there. So maybe if you fight up by the piano area up there, you have a better chance of avoiding the ads. And the broken sword piece is what we're looking for.
and those are the hands that you should have killed at the start. And then we will be on to collecting the four runes to get the fourth broken sword piece. Rune of Zor, or Xor, or however you want to say that, is in Plane of Tranquility. Could have got this on the way to Plane of Storms. You just head toward Plane of Storms, jump off that bridge to the right, and it's right there underneath the water. Marked on the maps if you have Bree Walls or Bree Walls maps. And the Rune of Yurno is in Castle Mistmore. Go down to a Lesser Fate Arc or Greater Fate Arc and get into Lesser Fate Arc and then go to Castle Mistmore. You should probably know where that is. It is in the graveyard area. When you're facing the graveyard and looking at the building is on the right side. However, in this video I ran to the left side because there was somebody power leveling over there and I didn't want to train the 40 mobs that I just kind of pulled onto them. So you can kind of see them right there. And I do run around when I go back out. So hopefully they don't get trained, but they could probably handle it in this era. So there's the second rune. And the rune of Zoda is in Scarlet Desert. And to get there I went to the Twilight Sea. I used the portal stones in the guild hall. I think that there is actually, in plain of knowledge, a stone for it, or you can port it there. I put Levitate on here to get across the, the, the water. I don't want to slow myself down at all. And I go right into the Scarlet Desert Zone. When you get in the Scarlet Desert area, it is in the northeast quadrant uh, by the Sen Revenants. Uh, so you're going to go up to the northeast area there. It's kind of that black mark on the map there. And you're going to go up this big-ass hill, and it's kind of in a back building. So... Braywell's maps will have all this on there. Otherwise, like I said, the, these are the steps from EQ progressions. And you can always go there. There's maps and uh, more detailed instructions. This is just kind of the video follow, follow along, if you will. So up these steps, and I have such a hard time seeing this. And this is bad because these bags are actually quite large compared to some of the shit that you have to do in the 1.5. So you really got to get good at these ground spots. Like it doesn't even look like it's, it's actually in there. When you're zoomed out so i have to zoom in and turn at certain angles sometimes to find these these damn ground spawns but maybe it's because i'm getting old so once you get that it'd be a ruin three and you can see it there it was apparently there the whole time but i couldn't fucking see it so so now we have three or four runes the last rune that we're going to get is in the gulf of gunthak and that's basically going to be across the water and to the southeast area there would be a undead sailor of some type there on a ship wreck front kind of set up like a tent so it's in the back of it it'll scoop that up so way in the back here and it's you can see the bag on the ground in there and of course you gotta get close enough to pick the shit up So that's the last rune, and we're going to turn these in for the next sword piece, the broken sword piece, and that's Rhombus and Everfrost, which is at the Eldon camp. Good thing about him being at the Eldon camp is that you have to go to South Row after you combine them in that scabbard, and so you can take the Magus right across the South Row for the next part after this. Um, for some reason, I must have combined them in the scabbard and stopped the video, so I don't actually have me taking every all the broken sword pieces and putting them in the scabbard and combining them. But that's what happened after I turned these four runes and I got the fourth broken sword piece. And then I took uh, Beltran Solvent and the four broken sword pieces, put them into that scabbard, and then you get uh, the Fractured Courage Bringer. So that is the step that is not in video here. So the four broken sword pieces, he's going to give me one here. And that blue thing, which is Beltran Solvent, that goes into that scabbard that we got in that very early stages there. So... Once we have that combined and we have the Fractured Courage Bringer, then we're going to take the Magus to uh, South Row, where we're going to go back to see Killfall again. And we're going to hand him the Fractured Courage Bringer, which is the sword that we just combined in the scabbard. He's going to hand it back, but it's going to have a different lore stamp on it for the next part. And he's in the southeast section of South Row, which we already know because we did this. We visit him before. So there it is, he handed it back to my inventory. And then the final step, we're going to go all the way back to the plane of Valor. And we're going to see Beltran Worders again. And we're going to give him that fractured 
courage bringer. And that's all we're going to have to do to get the epic 1.5 flag so that we can start the 1.5. So this prequest will be completed then. So pretty simple. Um, the only hard part was really just waiting for that Canis Painbringer guy in Planet Torment to pop. Everything else was fairly easy. Can be done with less than one group for sure. Always nice to have one group for the Maestro and uh, for the Planet Storms boss because those ads can get kind of crazy. Okay, so we're back at Beltran Ritters. We're going to hand him the Fractured Courage Bringer. And sometimes I forget that I actually it's actually in my main inventory. Because usually I have all bags there, but I took that off for that scabbard. So hand that back to him, and this big frog's going to spawn, and that's going to be that. And you will be getting the congratulations because you are now ready to do the epic 1.5 and stay tuned because I have completed that and I will be making a video soonish. So thank you for watching.